New Zealand has slashed its cash rate. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my stein of coffee and I thought we would look at New Zealand's slash to their cash rate. It's the lowest I've got in any of the data I've got in front of me. Uh, so what does that all tell us about how NZ are going? I suspect that they are in a similar, if not worse, situation than Australia. So let's have a look. Official cash rate reduced to 1%. Now before we jump through this article, we'll just jump here to the trading economics data that we can have here. And you can see, there it is, there's one. So they've gone down from 1.5% down to 1%. And the forecast, the consensus was 1.25. So they've cut harder than the consensus or the trading uh, economics forecast as well. So they've done a hard cut. They've done, you know, 50 basis points down. That's a big deal. Let's jump here. We'll go look at uh, one year. And you can see here, you know, it's all boring, boring, boring. And then boom, boom, hitting it hard. Five years, 10 years, and then we'll go back to max. We see, you know, back in the early 80s, shot a bloody, bloody high. Is that is that right? Over 60%? Can someone, uh, I need to look, look at my history there because that's insane. I'll just read up here. 67.32% in March of 1985. <laughs> And a record low of 1.75. Well, not anymore. Record low is 1. 1%. 67% interest rate. Okay. Glad I live in Australia. <laughs> That's just... Damn. Could you imagine having a mortgage on that? Maybe the $600,000 apartment that the student borrowed. And she wonders why she couldn't get finance. Maybe now with the cash rate cut, she might. So let's have a look. So the official cash rate is reduced to 1%. The Monetary Policy Committee agreed that a lower OCR official cash rate is necessary to continue to meet its employment and inflation objectives. Employment is around its maximum sustainable level, while inflation remains within our target range but below the 2% midpoint. Recent data recording improved employment and wage growth is welcome. Wow. I mean, I've been, I've just been reading too much, um, watching too much stuff from Mises U and reading too much about Austrian economics. So just all these, these, you know, monetary manipulations and fine tuning with out of date data. It doesn't fill me with any confidence. So I'm becoming too cynical about it all. GDP growth has slowed over the past year and growth headwinds are rising. In the absence of additional monetary stimulus, employment and, infl and inflation would likely ease relative to our targets. Global economic activity continues to weaken, easing demand for New Zealand's goods and services. Heightened uncertainty and declining international trade have contributed to lower trading partner growth. Central banks are easing monetary policy to support their economies. Global long-term interest rates have declined to historic low levels, consistent with low expected, expected inflation and growth rates in the future. So I wonder where where New Zealand sits with regards to their trade. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the data from New Zealand, just their economy. And this is from the Observatory of Economic Complexity. Uh, one of my favorite websites, just for understanding this. And we have a look, New Zealand, the economic complexity is 0.48. They're the 41st out of 126 countries in the world. And to compare that to Australia, they're more complex than us. <laughs> they're more complex than us. Their exports are 37.3 billion, 57th in the world. We're 243 billion. Wow, they're not, they're, we need to up our exports so we can say NZ are at 10% uh, of us. Their imports are 36.3. Their GDP per capita is 41,000. Ours is 48. So I'm not, I can't help it comparing Australia to New Zealand. Okay, guys, you know, it's just how we do it. Now let's have a look at their exports. 14% of New Zealand's exports is concentrated milk concentrated milk is 14% of their exports. Then you've got sheep and goat meat. Butter, 6.2% of their exports for the entire country is butter, and then cheese, and then milk. Well, I frankly, I, I have, uh, I like sourcing my butter from New Zealand because a lot of it's grass fed, so it's good for you. And the cheese too, it's, it's good. So I, I'm not surprised. And then you've got rough wood, you've got wine, fruit, raw aluminium, a few minerals there. Wow, we'll just uh, we'll isolate. Let's have a look at there. I mean, here you go. 
Raw aluminium makes up the majority of their mineral exports and scrap iron. Wow. Okay, so that's useful to see. That gives us an overview of their exports. A lot of foodstuffs. Now, you look at what the imports are, broadcasting equipment, cars, crude petroleum. So if the dollar is going to be affected, all of this will be affected. It'll make these things more competitive. So that'll be good, but everything else will be worse. And look at their trade balance. Okay, so they're doing okay at the moment, but they're very close. Wow, they were running a deficit for a while. Hmm. So where, what are their destinations? Well, 24% to China. 6.4% to Japan, so all of the Asian countries, not surprising. Australia is 15%, frankly, I thought we'd be a bit higher. US is 9.7%, uh, so it's not surprising. So any slowdown in these economies caused by the trade friction between China and then the flow into Asia would surely affect New Zealand. And, you know, economic conditions in Australia would surely affect New Zealand, or maybe not. If we're talking about foodstuffs here, there's always a demand for these things. There's always a demand. And this is where they're, they're bringing stuff in. 12% from Australia. Good oh. So let's jump back here now that we've gotten a bit of an overview of their economy and that they're pretty much a butter and milk country with some sheep and goat meat thrown in. So there you go. What, what would you rather? Australia without iron ore dependent exports that are dropped in price or concentrated milk? Let me know what you think in the comments. So in New Zealand, low interest rates and increased government spending that's what we want, will support a pickup in demand over the coming years. Business investment is expected to rise given low interest rates and some ongoing capacity constraints. Increased construction activity also contributes to the pickup in demand. I mean, let's have a look here at New Zealand and we will just look at some other indicators. And uh, let me just find it here. Consumer confidence. We'll jump here. Let's look at their consumer confidence is where it's sitting. So it's, you know, 103.5. So it's it's heading, trending. Well, it's all over the place, frankly, in the last few quarters. But it's it's pretty, it's lower than it was. So we'll have to see where it goes over there. We'll have to see where New Zealand goes. So our actions today demonstrate our ongoing commitment to ensure inflation increases to the midpoint of the target range and employment remains around its maximum sustainable level. So, um, okay. And here's a summary. The Monetary Policy Committee agreed there was a need for further monetary stimulus to meet its inflation and employment objectives. The committee noted recent economic developments were broadly as expected and employment was around the target maximum sustainable level. The committee was pleased to see... Is this the same thing? Nope. The committee was pleased to see the labor market data held up relative to expectations in the June 2019 quarter. However, the committee noted that inflation remains below 2% and the outlook for employment and inflation was softer. So yes, GDP growth had slowed and global conditions have weakened. The committee agreed that the balance of risks to achieve its consumer price inflation and maximize sustainable employment objectives was tilted to the downside, although members placed emphasis, placed different emphasis on the sensitivities to these risks. The committee noted the decline in long-term government bond yields to historic low levels. Financial market participants expected both inflation and policy interest rates to remain low globally for a prolonged period. Some members noted that survey measures of short-term inflation expectations in New Zealand had declined recently. Others were encouraged that long-term expectations remain anchored at close to 2%. The committee agreed that weak global economic conditions could see imported inflation remain low if global growth slows further or if commodity prices decline. The members discussed the range of appropriate policy responses should importate, imported inflation persist at low levels. The committee welcomes the recent employment and wage data, but noted that private sector wage growth was subdued despite businesses having difficulty finding labor. The members discussed that recent slowdown in growth could dampen wage inflation by more than assumed. Some noted that if cost pressures remained elevated, firms may pass on costs to consumer prices by more than assumed, while others viewed the wage pass through as a natural consequence of the tight labor market and policy stimulus. The members discussed the recent slower domestic GDP growth and the impact of slowing global demand on New Zealand through the trade, finance and consumer confidence channels. Let's have a look at how's New Zealand GDP sitting at here. I mean, there you go. 
it's not doing too bad. GDP growth rate last predicted, highest, lowest. So, you know, could be worse. Could be worse. The committee noted that additional stimulus from central banks had underpinned growth and reduced the likelihood of a more pronounced slowdown. However, some thought that even with support from monetary stimulus, considerable economic and policy uncertainty could see global growth continue to decline. Other members noted that the easing in global financial conditions since the beginning of the year or a shift in political environment could lead to a pickup in global growth over the next year. The committee acknowledged the importance of additional spending from households, businesses and the government to meet their inflation and employment targets. They also agreed that additional monetary stimulus was needed. I mean, that's the only thing they have. The members discussed several important uncertainties. The committee noted that low business confidence had dampened business investment in 2018 and had remained weak in mid-2019. The members discussed that if sentiment remained low, perhaps due to global economic conditions, or if profitability remained squeezed, growth might not increase as anticipated over the medium term. The members also noted that the shift in domestic production from manufacturing towards services was also dampening business investment. The outlook for household spending was discussed with regards to the assumed dampening impact of soft house price inflation. Some members noted low mortgage rates could contribute to a strong pickup in house price inflation, which could support consumption. Do you think? Do you think it would at such a low rate? Other members noted that house price inflation could remain weak, for example, if net immigration continue to decline relative to the number of new houses being constructed. Well, how much of these of the purchases is coming from offshore finance? How much is it? So, I mean, I think that's enough for us to get an understanding of what their position is, where they're going, and why they've cut rates. So this will be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see if their manipulations in the market will make any difference. Uh, we'll see how New Zealand's going. I mean, there's always going to be demand for milk. There's always going to be a demand for concentrated milk, isn't there? <laughs> you know, it's 14% of their, their exports. But the problem is, with, unre with decline in Asia and, uh, you know, the effect on their dollar, the purchasing power they have on a global stage, how much is it going to affect all of this? I know the Australian dollar is heading south. It's heading south. That's going to increase our cost of living. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you all again later today. Take care.